Welcome, my name is Tino, I'm part of the Hopper development team and in this video I want to show you a quick tour through the Hopper wallet integration guide which we've published recently. On my screen you see two links which you need to get started. One is pointing to the wallet integration guide itself which is published on GitHub and the second link is pointing to what we call the RPC over Hopper, uh, a dedicated system which you use as part of that integration. So let's jump right into the wallet integration guide itself. I've opened it already in Google Chrome and it's mainly a one readme file which you can follow from start to, to end to get your system up and running locally. So let's look at what information you can find in here. First off, a little bit of an introduction. What is Hopper? I don't want to go into this. If you are interested to learn more about Hopper and what we do, you can follow these links. Then the RPCH, that's the important bit of extra software which you need to run alongside a Hopper node on your system to get started. Luckily, we've automated a lot of that process. So for you to get started on integration into a wallet, you only need to use a pre-made setup. However, this is a little bit of an architectural overview of how that setup is going to work. So in the middle, at the foundation of the setup are five hopper nodes here in yellow. These hopper nodes represent a fully working hopper network. So essentially on your computer, you're running a full network, which is capable of encrypting messages and passing through messages from one hopper node to another and then exiting on that hopper node. This would normally be a very tedious and difficult endeavor to set up. And that's why we have this pre-made configuration for you. On top of these hopper nodes, we have RPCH nodes running. The RPCH node is a dedicated server, which is exposing an RPC API similar to what you know as the Ethereum JSON RPC API and which can interface with a local HopperD node to actually send messages through the Hopper network. So in terms of wallet integration, what will happen is we will connect MetaMask to our locally running RPCH instance. Then MetaMask will send its RPC requests through that instance, which will be routed through your HopperD network at some point, these requests will exit at another RPCH node, which we call exit node. And then this node will actually perform the request towards your RPC provider, which could be uh, running at Infura or Quick Node or some other uh, option. Once the request has been served and you received a response, that exit node will route that response back through the Hopper network to the entry RPC node and then back to your MetaMask. And all of this in a very transparent manner, as you will see later. So let's get to setting up the working environment. We try to make this as simple as possible, but still there are a couple of technical requirements which you need to have installed locally. So first you need make, which is a helper build utility. Most systems have that installed already. You need Docker, which we use to run separate containers and Docker Compose, which is a composition framework for Docker containers. So ultimately we can run a single composition file, Docker Compose file, which will take care of all the complex setup. That configuration can be found in the repository I mentioned before, the RPCH repository on GitHub. So let's open that as well. This is where the RPCH development happens as well as the DevKit development. And the DevKit is what we'll be using now locally. So in order to get started, I need to clone the repository locally and then I can run this command to set up my network. So I'm going to clone the repository first. I'll get the link from GitHub itself. 
and then I drop into my command line. And I clone the repository to some folder. And now I'm all set up. I've got all files locally and can proceed with the integration guide. So going back to the GitHub repository, step number three says run relay version equals latest make dev kit run. So what does it do? Let me quickly break it down before we execute it. We want to execute a so-called make target which is called devkit run, which will take care of the docker compose execution and basically, in a nutshell, run all the required containers and set up the configuration for those containers. So ultimately, we have the running hopper D and RPCH network locally. The environment variable relay version determines which version of the RPC H relay I want to run. In this case, I want to run the latest published version, but if you would like, you can also run older versions or in the future, any particular newer version. For this guide, latest is perfectly fine. So let's just start this up. So there seems to be a problem in my local configuration, which I'll fix on GitHub soon. For this guide, I can do it locally. So I just remove a little bit of shell interpolation here, which seems to get into our way. So now I can run the make command and it starts pulling down all those images from for Docker to run the local cluster. We see the Docker containers are already starting up. I'm going to close my right hand side window so we can see more. And it's basically in the process of starting up the local hopper D network. Depending on your system you run this on, this may take a little while. All in all, this configuration will run six Docker containers, one of which is running actually multiple processes. So this does take a little bit of time.
here we are again our containers continue the startup at this point our relay containers have already started as well we can see this on the left hand side that a couple of relay containers are actually logging and our HarperD container which is called Pluto is running as well now we just wait a little bit of time for our HopperD network to synchronize so that multiple peers can be discovered within the network. And this will be shown as log messages in here. So the Hopper D network has fully started and now we can already see that RPCH has found four eligible peers in the network. So this printout is per RPCH instance. That means all of the RPCH nodes have found enough peers to be working correctly. The peer discovery will repeat every 20 seconds. So we've completed this step and can return to the integration guide on GitHub. Now we can proceed with the actual configuration of our MetaMask. In order to demonstrate this, I've set up two MetaMask accounts on Gnosis Chain. One I call Testa Alpha, and another one is called Testa Beta, which I funded with a little bit of XDAI for demonstration purposes. Now we need to understand the different endpoints which we have available locally to make sense of all the setup. First off, we have an RPCH node, which is running on localhost port 9001. This is what we are going to use for MetaMask to send RPC requests to. Then another node is the actual HopperD node, which is exposing an API endpoint this API endpoint for the first node is on localhost port 13301. And for those interested, you can check out the documentation which is served by the node itself as well in the so-called Swagger format. And then we have HopperD's admin panel, which you can use to debug your Hopper D node or perform different administrative tasks through UI. This one is running for the first node on localhost 19501. And you can use this complete URL, just copy paste it into your browser and it will connect to your Hopper D right away. As we can see here, there are multiple printouts already from that started node. If you want to make yourself familiar with the, the administrative options you have here, take a look at the Hopper D GitHub repository or just help, help in here to see what commands you have available. So let's continue with the wallet integration. In order to make MetaMask send RPC requests to our locally running RPCH, we need to configure a new network in MetaMask. You can use this particular complete URL as the network and configure it in MetaMask with the name you would like. In order to do so, you go to your account in MetaMask, go into Settings, Networks, and here you can see I have Ethereum mainnet set up as well as Gnosis Chain and I want to add a new network. which is custom, and I give it a useful name, Gnosis over Hopper. I provide the complete URL, which I've copied from the integration guide. Chain ID for Gnosis chain is 
100, the currency is XDAI. I save that. And now MetaMask has already connected to Gnosis over Hopper, which I've run lo running locally. You can verify that it did so by checking out the logs. So normally, if no requests are being served by the RPC instances, you will see these kind of logs. But every once in a while, MetaMask makes requests, as, and as you can see, there's lots of verbose log output from the RPC nodes coming, which shows how it sends messages through the locally running Hopperd network and doing the encoding and decoding in the process. And this will repeat if you leave MetaMask open every once in a while, uh, because MetaMask is checking obviously for your balances as well as fee history. So to complete this process, I want to now make a transaction and send funds from my Tester Beta account to Tester Alpha. Therefore, I'm going to select Alpha as the recipient. I will send it a little bit of XDAI. Gas is being calculated. And now I can confirm that I want to send those funds. And my nodes are very busy sending RPC requests around. Ultimately, the transaction will have arrived on chain. I will switch to my alpha account and just wait until the transaction has been confirmed on chain. MetaMask is continuously performing RPC requests and ultimately the balance has changed for my tester alpha account and likewise, Tester Beta has now, as we can see here, some X die less, which have been moved to Tester Alpha. And this transaction, which is now on chain, has been fully served over your locally running Hopper network using your RPCH setup. With this, I want to conclude this tour of the wallet integration guide. There are many web wallets which you can try to configure the same way like I did for MetaMask. I encourage you to take a look at these as well. And if you want to integrate this setup, basically the RPCH support into a wallet and make it really nice from UX perspective, we've already collected a couple of ideas how you could do that so that users don't have to paste around URLs like I did in this guide which is certainly more geared towards developers like you. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you like the guide. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our support channels, either on GitHub itself or on Discord and Telegram. Our forum is also very active um, and you can certainly get in touch with uh, our development team as well as our community team there too. Goodbye.